Bet you never seen a pig. 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 It is tough that I, as a consumer of sneaker brands, still enjoy sneakers after knowing about the unfair treatment that the Indonesians and the Chinese suffer just to get the product to me. In their country, people work in factories and have no education because they are too busy manufacturing products to ship to America. In America, it is never shocking to see an individual wearing common name brands like Jordans, Nikes, Adidas, Asics, Clarks, Converse, Vans, Reeboks, Furries, Under Armour, Timberlands, Ewings, Uggs, Pumas, New Balances, and much more. Stores like Foot Locker, Expression, Finish Lighting, Concept, Bodega, Chance, and many more provide them at different retail values. Sweatshop workers don't make a lot of money are poor and starving and must have to work overtime hours just to get a little extra on top of the tiny wages they receive. But they create many shoes that we value and adore so much. They would kill to get paid a little extra to still make more sneakers. But it's sad to say that people are willing to fight or kill each other for sneakers. At this point in time, the sneaker game's so crazy that we have to implement raffle, raffles. The amount being made compared to the demand, it's become so hectic out there to where a year to two years ago, you had customers banging on glasses, breaking glasses, um, getting into fist fights, and just doing all the crazy things out there to where um, we had to implement like something. In the city, this is Barbara, and I'd like today to focus on a very important topic, and that is topic connected with how we define dignity, dignity, seriousness of something or a person. I think that we need to have that understanding of the concept of dignity as foundation for criticism of what is its opposite, lack of dignity. And the reason that we have to understand the importance of dignity as um, an idea and word that defines foundations of honor is because many people today are being lightly dishonored, lightly. Uh, the dignity is being destroyed and there is this wave of efforts to bring in humiliation, degradation, um, destruction of a person's career, jobs, income, as something that is a just punishment. But those of you who understand the laws of God and divine justice, know that the Bible very specifically stresses that whoever takes a job from another from another person and makes the person unable to provide for himself or herself is guilty of murder. So we have a situation in which God himself understands destruction of life as very serious violation of divine law. And in ancient times that was taken so seriously that any able-bodied person was provided income, work, place in which that person could have access to means of sustenance, like 
food, clothing, um, house to live in, because every human being by nature must have a dwelling place. That's just um, part of the human life to be healthy. So this attack on dignity of a person became mur murderous. In other words, if somebody is perceived as being guilty or accused of being guilty, the person loses the job, loses income, many become homeless, lose health and die. So God's understanding of what it means not to have income from work is very close to reality that sooner or later that person without um, sustenance was going to die. And I think that a sense of justice that would sadistically destroy the person's income because of some um, offense that is really not illegal but somebody got offended by a, uh, somebody's statement or somebody's belief system and then that person is destroyed by losing any sources of income. I just heard a few hours ago about a man who is a journalist and he lost his job over a comment about somebody famous and now he is in fear of losing his life over punishment because he expressed truly what his mind thought. So healthy response would be to inv uh, involve that uh, idea that the person expressed in a conversation, in a debate, in effort to use rhetorics and persuasion to uh, change that person's mind. That's healthy. And if the person doesn't change his or her mind, then we continue believing that at some point they will come to the truth or maybe that argument and debate will change our minds. Maybe we were the ones who were wrong. So that is a healthy way and unhealthy ways. Banning, firing a person from job, taking resources of life to that person and then resulting in that person's losing life. Don't think that those things are not noticed by God. And sooner or later, divine justice will come to those who are destroying life over taking a person's means of sustenance. Years ago, I was a very accomplished uh, journalist and I was um, on a job and the driver who happened at that time to be also my boss caused a car accident in which he wasn't injured but I was. So in this moment I lost all sources of income but this was an accident. It was not designed to harm me. Now, what is happening today with people being banned on social media, fired from jobs, is they are not injured. There is no accident. It's a planned uh, tool to get rid of their lives because somebody became uncomfortable with what they think or with what they believe in. So, when I juxtapose the two situations, the causality is different. 
but the outcome is the same. The person is in danger of life. And in my situation, that moment of injury, in which I had to be dependent on other people to survive, became a turning point in my understanding about value of human life. 36, 35 years later, you see me here. I talk to you over airwaves, so something happened that allowed me to go through that tragedy and survive. And ever since that time, my life has been a pathway of tremendous beauty and nobility of meeting people with uh, amazing faith and amazing heart. And then the simultaneous pathway was discovering evil in mankind that I wouldn't have believed existed if it hadn't been done personally to me. So I am very realistic about diverse kinds of ways in which people deal with somebody who has no income. There was a moment in my life where I was abandoned by everybody except God. And 20 years ago, he gave me a magnificent miracle on Christmas Day, 1998. So in the eyes of people around me, I was nothing. I was not worthy even of some food and drink. They tried to starve me to death. But in the eyes of God, I had dignity, I had worth, worth of a miracle from kingdom of God. So we have this juxtaposition of two attitudes, divine attitude who loves all of us and the attitude of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of God, who came here to rescue us because he took the suffering and pain on the cross. And on the other hand, there is attitude of people who use somebody's injury or somebody's lack of income as an opportunity to humiliate, to degrade, destroy, and get rid of. So those are two different ways of dealing with financial situations or with situations that um, involve inability to have income. So banning somebody from income and or um, through tragedy or injuries a person not being able to have it. And when we turn to divine law God wants the person to continue having dignity, even in a difficult situation. In a situation of injury, at least support of people around to feed the person, house the person. And in the situation in which the person is deprived of income, the person should immediately be allowed to have another job or um, the employer should not have such easy way to get rid of somebody because of the person's uh, political opinion. So I think that we are entering time in the history of the world in which we have to very seriously come back to the idea and foundation of dignity and honor as standard for human action. A person who would have dignity within himself and herself would not be able to fire 
his or her colleague from a job over a few remarks. So we are dealing with lack of dignity that comes from a person be, um, deprived of any income and then being in danger and threat of losing his or her life in a situation in which people who are in positions of authority have only a shadow of dignity because underneath there is cruelty and murderous hands that would get rid of anybody in that person's way and that authority instead of strengthening those who are connected to it weakens and destroys so in many ways a person who would so lightly fire a colleague from a job is degraded in the way he or she wields authority so we have to come back to the definition of authority in the context of dignity majesty seriousness we have to understand that a person may enter an office with authority and degrade the office by his or her lack of nobility honor dignity and respect of life of those who are under that authority in some other situation it's the reverse people would remove somebody from authority because they want to tear the office to pieces and take the resources and money from that office so that is degrading too so we are in a situation today in which we have to develop sophisticated understanding of applications of authority to diverse situation that involves lives of people connected to it and i think that politics that ignores that question becomes unable to remove itself from that distraction of life because it doesn't have the center that would define its purposes as majestic as glorious as life-giving and light-giving when you look today into the eyes of politicians you don't see loving glorious affection that would lift you up you see fear of losing the political office or losing income coming to that political office so that politician or that group of politicians is not without income but is in fear of losing it at any time and likewise those who are connected to that kind of political authority are in fear of losing support and being dispersed and going into really dangerous situations of sudden changes of law or sudden changes of attitude so all of this lack of dignity at the foundation 
of leadership and national life created instability. And instability is a form of lack of order and lack of peace. So as a result, we have so many looking for fights, for wars, for um, ways to impose their wills on others just by the use of um, their way and their idea of what the right system of order in a city should be. And as a result, we live in a situation in which people are frightened of each other. I've been uh, turning on the news and every day there is um, news about some violent shooting in different places, but why would this be? Why have that kind of situation of fear in ordinary places when we can have stability, right order of things and peace. But before we have stability, right order of things and peace, we have to restore dignity at all levels from government offices to business offices, school offices, um, real estate offices, and we have to restore dignity to all people who live in the land. At the highest level, of course, it's all mankind. If we don't do it, we'll just continue living in this very unpleasant situation of constant fear. And those who know about God know that God didn't give us spirit of fear, but he gave us spirit of love, spirit of power, and spirit of sound mind. So may divine justice remove that spirit of fear from us and restore within us the heritage that is rightfully ours and that is the heritage of the spirit of love, of the spirit of power and the spirit of sound mind. Sound mind means that we can communicate with each other and we know the difference between linguistic communication and necessities of natural law to live and survive. So I encourage you to think about those diverse ways in which dignity can be restored and in which that multi-level degradation, humiliation and despair can be transformed to majesty, to nobility, to respect, to honor, to dignity. When we do this, when we achieve that purpose and we understand that without it, without dignity in all places, we cannot have restoration of a sense of value. And when you have a sense of value, you would never approve of banning somebody over some innocent opinion. You would never ban somebody from any income because you would feel ashamed to do that. Your dignity would not allow you to have blood guilt on your hands because of your decisions 
connected with another human being who then loses his or her life. And in closing, I wanted to stress again the connection between dignity and life. And we cannot have love in social situations if the heart is so broken it is unable to have within it ability to connect with others in a living, loving, wonderful way. So let's stop that horrible firing and banning of people. Let's create ways to connect our hearts through divine order, through loving peace and dignity. Thank you so much for listening.